Okay, so carrying on from where I left off in the last lecture, this one, um, uh, when we looked at the coming form and the coming con, I already mentioned that they are different from the Marshall Plan as well as the Truman Doctrine. But um, you can remember in such a way that they started off the containment policy with the Truman Doctrine and the Marshall Plan. And this one is the Soviet Union's response to the two things. It's not a one-for-one -one direct response, but they responded in such a way that they created the Comic Con as well as the Comic Con. Um, you can contrast Comic Con directly with Marshall Plan because it's like the Soviet Union's version of Marshall Plan, okay, Comic Con, with the intention of providing economic help. Of course, the difference is that Marshall Plan is offered to everybody, whereas Comic Con is just only restricted to communist countries, okay. Um, of course, the scale in which they offered Comic Con was very, it's not as good as Marshall Plan because Soviet Union's economy is definitely not as strong as USA. So, therefore, it is on a smaller scale. Okay, and the arrangements, okay, just note the last point here. Arrangements also tend to benefit uh, actually Soviet Union and actually would disadvantage the satellite states. So, in a sense, actually, it is quite not so good. Lah. And of course, you can see that for us, we would, whenever we are teaching about the Cold War, we would want to paint Soviet Union in the very negative aspect because they are so-called the bad guys in this, um, in the history of things, lah. Okay. And now we're going to move on next to. Oh yes, before I move on, uh, consider the question once again about the success and the failure of the uh, containment policy. Um, if you want to talk about the success, you can mention the Marshall Plan. If you want to talk about, if you consider, did the, if the containment policy really failed, actually you will realize that there's not many things that you can talk about. La. And the textbook would actually provide very limited information on this. So actually, how do we deal with questions like this? Okay, The containment policy was a success. How far do you agree with the statement? This is something you can start thinking about now. All right. But first of all, like the intention of, as I mentioned, the intention of what I'm doing here is that you need to first of all understand what is going on. If you don't understand what's containment policy, what is Truman Doctrine, Marshall Plan, Comic Con, Comic Form, you will be stuck. Okay, and if I have to waste more time going through this in class, then it will defeat the entire purpose of this, uh, this flip classroom thing that we are doing. Okay, so moving on to the next part, the manifestations of the Cold War. Now, this is how the textbook actually uh segments out these things right so if you look at the textbook the very last page on chapter one on page 33 okay on page 33 uh we have looked at the top part of it reasons for the cold war the three reasons ideological conflicts the world war two necessary alliance number two the third one the post world war one was uh post world war two worsening relations between soviet union and usa so now we're looking at the, la the second half of this chapter, which is the manifestations of the Cold War. And there are four things that we are looking at. But even still, right, when you are addressing a question such as the reasons for the Cold War, you will realize that they, they can possibly also mention things about under manifestations of the Cold War. Uh, now, how do I actually define manifestations? You can just take it as something uh, like the impact of the Cold War, if you have it. Okay, because there are quite a lot of things, we are just only looking at the initial um, timeline of it. La. That means to say we are looking at uh, just at the start of the Cold War since 1945 and uh, moving on from there, what actually happened at the early stages of the Cold War. The subsequent chapters, we will be looking at Korean War and Cuban Missile Crisis and that's further on inside. It is also considered the impact of the Cold War, but it's not as uh, immediate as the things that we are looking at now. Okay. Okay, now, so the first thing, uh, carving out political and economic spheres of influence, we have already mentioned that, and so the setting up of Comic Form and Comic Con and the Truman Doctrine and Marshall Plan actually contributed to this uh, two distinct and competing blocks in Europe. So, right, under Winston Churchill's uh, Iron Curtain, this, uh, it has already more or less... Okay, wait, let me rephrase. Huh? So from Winston Churchill's Iron Curtain, the intention was to show the two different sides of Europe. And now with the Comic Con and Comic Form and Truman Doctrine and Marshall Plan, it very obviously carves out these two different sides of Europe. Okay, and they are divided along the political and economic lines and this marks the start of the Cold War bipolarity. Now, 
look at page 20 of your textbook for the definition of bipolarity it is uh, used actually mainly during the Cold War okay describes the situation where only two countries in the world possess the greatest economic cultural and military influence and it is used to describe the state of Europe in which it is divided in and also it happens mainly during the Cold War okay so when we say the mark the start of Cold War bipolarity okay you think about it from the right from the start when I talk about the competing influences so USA is fighting for influences for over this group of countries and then Soviet Union is fighting over that group and once they have established their so-called influences in the respective countries it is now officially democracy versus uh, communism okay and so right the first thing about this Cold War, okay, the first impact, if you will have it, about the Cold War is that now there are two competing blocks. Okay, the blocks is spelled B-L-O-C-S, please don't mistaken with uh, block, B-L-O-C-K. Alright, now we're going to look at one of the impacts of it in the Berlin blockade. Alright, superpower confrontation in Berlin blockade. Now, for this, right, you first of all need to understand where is Berlin. Okay, now this one is a very unique situation. Okay, not this map. Okay, this map here. Okay, it tells you the location of Berlin. Look at this particular small thing right here. Okay, that is Berlin. Now, the unique thing about Berlin is that it's the capital of um, Germany. And that is also Hitler's last stand uh, where he actually tried to defend until his death and where he supposedly died as well. Okay, so that's why Berlin as a state as a city it is important to to whoever it is who has it so right after the war after world war ii they actually divided germany this map that you're seeing here is actually the map of germany and they divided germany into areas that they can control over if you look at the map in your textbook on page 20 that is much clearer okay you can see that on the in the textbook in the map on your textbook right uh, it is divided into the four areas where there's the Soviet zone, American zone, French zone, and the British zone. Okay, so uh, let's ignore this purple color thing here. Okay, then you take the entire blue thing that you're seeing here to be the democratic side of things. That means you say you combine together American, French, and British zone, that is where you will get this thing called a trizonia. Okay, and then so the Soviet Union, they get to have this red color side. So there lies the division between of Germany, and this is West Germany, and this is East Germany. So they existed as two separate countries. Okay, if you watch uh, sports like Olympics or World Cup and this, they participated as two different countries, not one. Okay, only until uh, the fall of communism, then Germany merged into one, and then you get the Germany that we know today. Now, the position of Berlin is in East Germany. Okay, but even so, it is still divided into that four parts so if you look at the map on your textbook okay berlin itself is divided again into four parts or if you want to put it in a simpler way to understand west and east berlin west berlin consisting of the french american and british uh, parts once again compared with the east berlin side so it is a very unique situation for the people living in west berlin in that they belong to the western side the western powers the democratic side of the cold war but yet, the position of Berlin is situated in the East Germany. Okay, so now understanding where is Berlin, let's look at actually what is the Berlin blockade. Now, um, oh yeah, I should have done this first. Whoops. Okay, so the background to this, um, after World War II, at the Yalta and the Potsdam conferences, Germany is divided into four zones of occupation. And although the Soviet zone is only one third of Germany, but Stalin wanted to use it to transform the whole of Germany into uh, a communist state. So basically, when Stalin has actually control of East Germany, he is not happy and he wants to use it as a platform, if you will, so that they can continue to spread communism to the entire Germany. Okay, and so for the Western powers, of course, they want to hold on to Germany and they want to prevent the problem of poverty, which might encourage the Germans to seek change by turning to communism. Now, this one, uh, this point right here, just think about it from the Treaty of Versailles. Okay, imagine if they did the same thing to Germany after World War II as they did to Germany in World War One. 
it might potentially encourage another case of Hitler because that's how Hitler came about because of the Treaty of Versailles Germany was devastated they continued to devastate them some more and then pissed them off some more and then after that they decided to try to build back national pride through Hitler and that's how the whole thing came about alright so after World War II what they want to try to avoid is the problem of poverty try to avoid actually devastating Germany even further of course, you can think back of the time when the French actually demanded for Germany to be devastated because they gonna invaded by Germany so many, so many times. But in this instance, the person who has the most money has the most power. So in that case, it is the United States who's, ha who's having the final say in everything. So therefore, they would want to prevent Germany from becoming even poorer and prevent them from actually turning to communism. Okay, that is the objective of the Western powers here. Now, so the capital of Germany, that's Berlin, right? We, I mentioned it just now. is divided into the four sections, but let's understand it as two sections, West Berlin and East Berlin. And so for Stalin, he would try to block movement of supplies. Uh, okay, wait. Sorry, uh, my train of thought is going a bit off. Um, now, for what happened, right, is that Stalin, he would try to occupy the entire Berlin. Okay, because Berlin, since it's such a unique situation in which the West Berlin belonging to the Western powers is situated in East Germany. So therefore, what Stalin would try to do was to chase them out. And what Stalin actually did was to block supplies moving into West Berlin. Okay, through water and land. Uh, he also blocked electricity and his aim here was to starve West Berlin to keep Germany divided and weak. Alright, so that they would, once they're divided and weak, they will look at communism and say, we, that is a very fantastic opportunity for us to actually uh, go to. And so that was Stalin's aim here, divide Berlin, make sure it is weak, and so that it will turn eventually to welcome and embrace communism. So that became what was known as the Berlin blockade. Okay, when Stalin actually blocked all supplies into West Berlin. Now the problem with this is that West Berlin, or rather the entire Germany at that point in time, they were devastated by the war and they required a lot, a lot of supplies moving in to keep them alive. And so when Stalin actually blocks these supplies, they would be, he's literally trying to starve them. Okay, trying to starve the entire city of Berlin. And he can do that because of the position of Berlin, West Berlin rather, in the middle of East Germany. He can block off the entire supply just by blocking off the land routes and the sea routes into West Berlin itself. Okay? So, how did the Western powers actually try to overcome this Berlin blockade? Is they started to fly supplies into West Berlin. Because, already mentioned down here, what? Okay, Stalin blocked the area through water and land. So that means to say they cannot use railroads or uh, use boats to send the supplies in. So the Western powers had to resort to actually flying in the supplies. So if you look at this picture on the right hand side, it's a picture of uh, inside of an aircraft. And if you can see, they are actually, these are milk bottles. And so they are just ferrying daily supplies into uh, West Berlin through flights. Okay, and this is how they are going to be doing it. If you look at the air routes down here, flying in, flying out, okay. So fly in from here and fly out from there and just dropping all the supplies necessarily into West Berlin. And this went on for 11 months. Okay, you must imagine the kind of logistics needed uh, in order to just keep West Berlin supply. We're talking about daily supplies here. Daily supplies as in your daily food that's required. And that is what the Berlin Airlift actually managed to succeed in doing. That is to provide supplies to West Berlin for the 11 months. Now, even though Stalin did block off the air and the sea, uh, sorry, the, sorry, not the air and the sea, the land and the sea, um, he didn't want to block off the air because there's no possible way. You cannot, you know, like build a dome and cover the entire Berlin and prevent the aeroplanes from flying in, right? So the only way to stop them is to shoot them down. But he also did not want to shoot them down because it will be seen as an act of war. Okay, if Stalin did manage to do that, uh, the Western powers would declare war on him. And then, you know, we would see World War III starting. La. And they, of course, did not actually want that after World War II, where billions, millions of people actually just died. Okay, so in the end, um, the Berlin blockade, it just proves that Stalin was a failure in trying to do that. And it actually raises the profile and the prestige and the reputation of the Western powers and the democratic country, the democratic side of things as well. Okay, 
Um, again, I'm running out of time, so I need to pause here and finish this uh, part of the Berlin blockade in the next lecture.